So, at last, it's all over. The Brexit debacle, hopefully, is now in its final stages of completion after three and a half years of waiting. Um, I'm bringing this video to you today on Monday the 16th of December 2019, um, four days after the uh, election uh, was called by the Conservatives. Um, a very good tactic by Boris Johnson basically to avoid the necessity for a second referendum and to lay, um, lay down once and for all the, 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 um, the, the dissension and the, the split with the, uh, the voice, the common voice of the people in the United Kingdom between those who wanted to remain and those who wanted to leave the European Union. So, what has come out of the result of this election? What has come out of it, in fact, is an amazing and outstanding majority of individuals, voters, who voted for blue conservative policies. And the main one of those is Brexit, let's get it done, let's remove the United Kingdom once and for all from Brussels, or control of Brussels. Now, what is very interesting here, there's all these Remainers, all those people out there who wanted to stay in, whether it was Corden, who was uh, in the United States running his little chat show, whether it's people like Steve Coogan, whether it's uh, Lily Allen, whether it's Keir Starmer, uh, ex-head of the Crown Prosecution Services, Dominic Grieve, the ex-Attorney General, all these Labour supporters, all these socialists, all these people and supporters of Antifa, all of these hooligans that go onto the streets, members of the Transport and General Workers Union, the commie left generally, had pushed their boat so far out into the, into the ocean that there was an, a massive and inevitable, in my opinion, backlash against them. And how is that backlash uh, personified? In the fact that 24 major constituencies in the United Kingdom that never had before had a Tory or a Conservative politician in power manage to become blue zoned Tory um, uh, um, uh, principalities. For example, in Stoke-on-Trent, Stoke-on-Trent North, Stoke-on-Trent South and Stoke-on-Trent Central and also in Newcastle underline for the first time in its history in voting memory turned away from Labour, Labour and went over to, to the Conservatives. So what in effect this has done, this is a message to all those who wanted to remain, all those individuals who jumped on board the Jeremy Corbyn Brussels media BBC bandwagon, all those, those merchants of doom from the Confederation of British Industry who all foretold calamity and lack of this and mayhem and an almost economic Armageddon would follow, you need to sit down and re-evaluate your world view because you got something terribly wrong, didn't you? Because if it had been left up to you folks, you'd have forced the fact of a second referendum and probably with some uh, sleight of hand by the Electoral Commission and the, the returning officers, there could have been an overwhelming change of view whereby now a referendum to take us out was a referendum to keep us in. So it didn't work. The likes of Burko, the ex-speaker of the House, uh, Houses of uh, Parliament there, he's been one of the main individuals who was trying to fulfil the Brussels agenda to keep us in. The satanic monarchy were also behind wanting to keep us in. 75% of the MPs in Westminster Parliament were Europhiles. By that we mean traitors, traitors to the cause and people who have sold out for money or title or other. Um, and it's not beyond question also as to why Nigel Farage suddenly decided not to place his Brexiteers in positions to challenge um, uh, Tory candidates. Um, that's still to be seen, but it's very, very unusual, I think, for him to have actually handed this so-called Brexit deal to Boris Johnson that he wasn't in favour of, Farage, but now seems to be willing to accept a deal is better than no deal. So, where does that leave us up until now? We've got people like Gina Nadira Singh, the woman who brought uh, the case uh, to the Supreme Court, 
so that the pr prorogation of Parliament was supposedly illegal. Major, major Soros-funded supporter of the Remain campaign. The entire judicial um, hierarchy in the Supreme Court, from Lady Hale through Neuberger, who was the previous president, right the way through, um, all these individuals wanted to keep you in against your will. So now we're out. Now what we are looking to do is build on on the ruins of what was nearly uh, a civil war, a civil war promoted by the European Union, where it was trying to turn husband against wife, father against son, and one community against the other. The Labour Party, if they had their way, they wanted nothing more than open borders, unrestricted immigration, um, foreign, alien cultures, religions, and uh, modalities brought into the country. And what that amounts to is nothing more than a policy of covert, silent, creep genocide. And that is what's being perpetrated on the people of the United Kingdom in a very, very slow, deliberate manner. Look up the definitions of what genocide is, and you will see that the, the social and cultural landscape within the United Kingdom, whereby an individual now cannot make a sign of the cross in public, he can't uh, call, call the, the activities over the, the Christmas period, a Christmas celebration, without supposedly it offending other, other, should we say, minority groups which are becoming more and more powerful. So in this transgender um, Sharia court Britain that we've got now in place, certain things have got to change and that's what I'm suggesting needs to change immediately and what we want to do now is try and establish a new Britain. Uh, a New England. So we would like to look to see where we're going from here, what we can contribute here. And so in my next video, the next video that I'm going to post, which has taken me three and a half years in waiting to at least get a clear, a clear line, a clear closed door from which to step off from, um, which has now arrived with the Brexit result. Now that we're about to leave the European Union, when new arrangements and new trade obligations can be uh, forged with places like the United States and many other countries in the world, what we're going to do now is bring something to the fore which will help every individual in the United Kingdom, and that is going to be the main topic of the next announcement. So, once again, for all those who voted Remain, you're just sitting there crying your tears into a cup which all the leavers are now happy to drink. Reappraise your views, reappraise the fact that you got it so wrong, and why did you get it so wrong? There was an overwhelming blue wave of voting in the United Kingdom, which proved one thing, and one thing only, that the referendum from June 2016 was good, it was accurate, and it's been reaffirmed on many, many occasions. So, thanks for listening. If you like it, hit the subscribe and touch uh, the notification button and pass the video on to other people. Thank you.